I travel around in all kinds of different environments, do a lot of camping. And with that, I get to really put gear to the test. I'm not just here to sell you crap. Now I'll put affiliate links on some of the stuff and I truly do appreciate it if you choose to use those links. But that's not what this is about. This is about me testing things out and helping you make a better decision to see if it's gonna be a good fit for you. So you wanna know how to start out overlanding? Well, first thing, get some place like this. You're gonna need a vehicle. Do you need a you know Jeep on bigger tires and all that? No, um, use what you got and go where it can get you. Now you're gonna need some sort of shelter. Now you want something to shelter you from the rain because it's not always bright and sunny. Actually, it may rain on me here pretty quick. Yes, I have this big fancy awning. You don't have to have that though. This is what I started out with. It is just a little awning tarp off Amazon. Works awesome. Then I've got a couple poles. I did spend some money on these. These actually cost more than the tarp. These are the Garden Pro. I really like them though. They're the only ones I've ever had, so I can't tell you if there's others that are better out there. These never let me down. One thing you will need to do is drill a hole in the bottom here. Because what's going to happen, rain's going to come in, it's going to get inside this tube, and it's going to fill up with water. Drill the hole, solve the problem. Let's get this tarp set up. Sorry I didn't show you the magic. Tied one corner of the tarp off here. Over on that side, I ran out of things to tie to, so I added an awning pole. Now we got to do the two that are in front. Those are going to require a little bit more skill, coordination, and stuff. So I'm going to use some stakes, some rope, and a BFH, big freaking hammer. Now it comes to the part where you need a little bit of coordination. One of the reasons I really like these is because they've got the tops that open up and there's a nice peg there. So I can put the grommets of my tarp right in there, put the topper on and I'm done. Same thing with the line. Get it the right height. Keep a loop at one end of the line. So I can just stick it right on there. So you can tie off to the tent stake. You can tie off to a loop in the line. I actually use a loop and a carabiner a cheapy plastic one I picked up at Home Depot. Get that kind of cinched down. Hey, hey, look at that. One more to go. Take my top off through the grommet. Then, well, I said one end of this had a loop in it. This one actually doesn't have a loop. I tie a knot called a bowline. Create a hole. Rabbit comes through the hole, around the tree, back through the hole again. Pull on the rabbit's head and its path. Bam, you got a bowling. All right, now I'm gonna adjust the height on this one. I'll run it to my tent stake. See how this side is sagging? Not a huge fan of that. You can actually, you know, just tie this down and make a nice little rain runoff. Collect a ton of water that way, by the way. But I'm gonna reposition my stake. It's not quite set up the best in the world. Put it through my little carabiner thing right here. I call these a carabiner. It's probably not what it's called, but you get the idea, right? And now, look at that beautiful tarp. Now it's not gonna work if we get any rain, which honestly is probably why you're setting it up. Get another awning pole and use that to prop it up in the center. Um, but I actually have a Devos Light Ranger. I know you've probably seen them before, like the 20 million other YouTubers that are showing them. I'm not gonna demo a Light Ranger for you, but I'm gonna show you one cool use for it. Devos Light Ranger, quick, dirty. Comes with a big old tripod, has a power button. Love it, works great. I think they just came out with a new one that's like Bluetooth and all the kinds of things that this one is not, because I've got their older model. I'm gonna roll out the tripod. Then I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna use it as a center post. Get this roughly in the center. 
not only will it get the water to run off of it, it's got another cool feature. It's your awning light. Dun, dun, dun. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Brian, you got this tarp set up here. You just brought this out for the video. I carry it with me 24 seven. You know what I use it for? It's the awning area for when I'm doing my cooking in the back of the truck. I rig it out the back and I've got my main awning coming out here with my fancy bug proof room and all that good jazz. Ground tents, not a bad thing at all. Don't feel bad about having a ground tent. It takes a little bit more time to set up, but man, they are a ton cheaper. This is actually my old backpacking tent. It takes up very little space, weighs almost nothing, and I just keep it in my truck just in case I break down and I have to walk. And I'm so far away that I can't get there in a single day. So I want a way to camp without a vehicle. Okay. That is shelter figured out. Next, we're gonna have water. You need to bring water with you and at least some sort of emergency filter device. All I've got is a big expensive Lifesaver jerry can, which works great, don't get me wrong. I use that to fill up my little user water jug. You're gonna want something for an emergency and I just get something small, cheap, go to REI or something like that and just check out the different type of filters that they have. Get something that you can carry with you that you're able to filter water. Because if you run out of the water that you brought, you want an emergency way to be able to get water. I just went grocery shopping. I bought a bunch of food. Buy what you like to eat, but make sure you can cook it. Right here is my nice fancy Overlander fridge. You gotta get one of these, right? No, absolutely not. If you're going out on long trips, it makes it a lot easier but you can make it with just a regular cooler and ice. Make sure and get everything cold or frozen before you put it in the cooler, chill everything down, and you're ready to go. Hey, don't judge. I said, eat what you like. And if it just happens to be something you don't have to cook that's super easy, well, hey, that works too. Now this spot comes with this big, huge fire pit. I don't have two cords of wood to fill that thing up and make it burn right. Got my $40 Amazon special. It does not look pretty anymore, but you know what? It still works. Now I know what you're thinking. You can't fit big pieces of wood in this tiny little fire pit. That's absolutely 100% correct. If you're gonna buy store-bought wood, don't get a little fire pit like this. This is for wood that you collect off the ground. This type stuff. Now what do I need, a hatchet? Nope, I got my BFH. All right, so I take my big freaking hammer and my stick, put my stick on the ground. Watch this very closely, it's very technical. And I whack it. If it's still too big, get a little piece to put underneath it and I whack it again. Now it fits just fine. So I cook bacon, then I take paper towels and I wipe the grease out of the pan before I do my dishes. And this stuff is magic at starting fires. So we're gonna save some money, not even use the cheater fire starters. Just gonna use some nice fat filled paper towels. So there's my back to basics overlanding setup. Got my tent for shelter when I'm sleeping. Got my awning for shelter when I'm not sleeping little fire pit to keep warm, little table, and a chair. Oh, and of course, the BFH. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button for me. Subscribe, hit notifications if you're interested in seeing more. Till next time, enjoy the ride.